we consider the Schrodinger equation given by the formula one uh, as uh, parameter epsilon tends to zero. Um, the potential in this equation uh, changes slowly with time, which is uh, indicated by the presence of the small parameter epsilon here in the second argument. Um, the Schrodinger operator defined by the right-hand side of this equation acts uh, in L2 on the positive, ha positive half line. Um, uh, by rescaling time, uh, this e equation is uh, often written in the form 2, um, especially in uh, quantum mechanics by physicists. Um, uh, the uh, operator uh, H of tau depends uh, on this uh, time tau, uh, and uh, one says uh, that uh, the equation 1 describes adiabatic evolution generated in L2 on the half line uh, by this operator with the Dirichlet boundary condition at zero. Yes, I forgot to mention that uh, we also take uh, the solution uh, at x equal uh, to zero to be zero. Yes, and uh, we are interested uh, in the case when the spectrum of this stationary operator is uh, for any time tau uh, um, uh, uh, for any time tau consists uh, of the absolutely continuous part uh, filling uh, the half line from zero to plus infinity and uh, a finite amount of negative eigenvalues having reached it disappear. And to study the case we consider the model potential which is uh, as a shrinking square potential well. Uh, it is, uh, one can say that it is defined uh, on the half plane uh, Tx, where x is non-negative, uh, by, by this picture here. Um, it is minus 1 uh, if uh, x uh, is from 0 to 1 minus tau and 0 uh, otherwise. So this is a square well uh, that shrinks with the time t. Uh, it shrinks slowly, and uh, the region of the half plane uh, where uh, um, uh, corresponding to the inside of the potential well uh, forms uh, a small uh, a, 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 a sector with a, with a small angle. Um, this model problem is actually very similar to another problem, uh, a problem in ocean acoustics. Uh, here uh, we have the Helmholtz equation in the half plane where the coordinate y is non-negative. Uh, and uh, the uh, refractive index k uh, equals k0, which is constant and uh, greater than 1 uh, in a narrow wedge adjacent to the uh, boundary of the half plane. Uh, and uh, it, it is equal uh, to 1 uh, everywhere else in the half plane. Uh, we add the Dirichlet condition uh, at the boundary uh, of the half plane um, and uh, we also require the solution and its normal derivative to be continuous uh, at, the, uh, at, the, at the lower boundary of the wedge on this line here. Uh, I also want to mention that uh, as the, uh, the, the angle of the wedge tends to zero, uh, this uh, normal derivative uh, becomes uh, very close to the uh, derivative uh, along the vertical direction, which we require to be continued, uh, continuous uh, implicitly in the, in the quantum mechanical problem with the Schrodinger equation. Uh, the quantum mechanical problem uh, is uh, simpler and uh, many, many results uh, can be uh, carried over from the quantum mechanical problem uh, to the acoustic one. And from now on, uh, I will be uh, talking about the quantum mechanical problem, though at times I will be uh, probably using some acoustic terminology when it is convenient. Uh, uh, yes. So we have uh, the stationary operated, uh, operator dependent on time uh, given by this formula here, where uh, the potential is uh, a shrinking square potential well. Uh, let us, uh, let us uh, 
um, uh, figure something out about its eigenvalues. Uh, for each uh, for each eigenvalue, there exists a, a critical moment of time, tau n, uh, given by this formula for the nth eigenvalue, uh, such that uh, before this moment the nth eigenvalue exists. Uh, as tau approaches tau n, the nth eigenvalue approaches the edge of the continuous spectrum, and uh, it disappears uh, for uh, tau. Uh, greater than or equal to tau n. Um, having understood that, uh, let's finally talk about the solutions of, of, of our problem that we study. Uh, first of all, we consider the following solution. Um, it is, um, it, we, we call it the generating solution, and if you, we were talking about the acoustic problem, uh, it would have uh, a really simple physical interpretation. Uh, this exponent is a plane wave, and uh, this sum is uh, the sum of this plane wave and uh, all the uh, all the waves obtained from it by uh, by reflection from the boundaries of the wedge. You recall that there was a wedge, and uh, the, the geometric solution is given by this formula inside of the wedge, which corresponds to the inside of the potential well and uh, uh, outside of the potential well, all the refracted waves, which isn't written here. Uh, if uh, the coefficient r sol solves uh, this difference equation on the complex, complex plane, uh, then uh, this, uh, this sum uh, formally solves, uh, solves our problem. And uh, if additionally the solution of this difference equation decays sufficiently quickly at infinity, then uh, this generating solution is an action, actual solution of a problem, uh, because then uh, this sum converges. Um, the generating solution depends on the parameter p, and uh, evidently, uh, quite obviously, it is uh, epsilon periodic in this parameter. And as such, we can uh, expand uh, this generating solution into a Fourier series. Uh, the Fourier coefficients uh, also solve our problem and they are precisely the solutions that we are interested in. Um, I would like to add that uh, this, uh, this uh, solution, uh, um, uh, by varying the parameter p, uh, we can uh, obtain uh, all the plane waves from this solution. And uh, uh, here you can see that, in a sense, uh, any plane wave can be uh, expressed as a sum of these uh, uh, solutions uh, psi n. And uh, because of this, it would seem that uh, these solutions are, are, are very important. And as it turns out, uh, as long as the nth eigenvalue of the stationary operator exists, so before the critical moment tau n, uh, this nth uh, Fourier coefficient uh, has uh, uh, asymptotics of the following form, uh, where psi n zero, so the, the first the first term in this sum, uh, is uh, actually uh, the eigenfunction of the stationary operator corresponding to the eigenvalue e n. Uh, formal asymptotic solution, uh, solutions of uh, of this uh, form uh, are. Uh, very important and are studied uh, by physicists. And uh, in, uh, in, in acoustics, uh, such solutions are usually called adiabatic normal modes. And uh, uh, this is what we will also call our actual solutions, psi n. Uh, these, are, these are actual solutions and uh, having these asymptotics and not formal asymptotic solutions. Um, so, uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, the asymptotics of uh, the nth adiabatic normal mode uh, in, in the half plane uh, where, where our problem is set. Before the critical moment, uh, this, uh, this solution is of the order of one uh, inside the potential well. And outside, uh, outside of it, it uh, decreases uh, exponentially. So the quantum particle, uh, which is described by the solution, is uh, localized within the potential well. Uh, nearby the critical moment tau n, uh, this solution becomes uh, of the order 
uh, of epsilon uh, to, to, to the power one sixth. Uh, and uh, afterwards it becomes even smaller of the order of uh, epsilon. And uh, from time to time, uh, namely in the vicinity of the uh, critical, uh, critical moments with the lower indices, uh, this solution becomes a little bit more noticeable again. Uh, of the of the order of epsilon to the uh, power um, of two thirds, um, the constructions the, constru the, the construction of these uh, uh, solutions and uh, the study of their asymptotics inside the potential well was uh, carried out by Alexander Fedotov, uh, and um, uh, now uh, we are concerned with uh, what is happening outside of the potential well. Uh, um, uh, let's uh, go, go back to the vicinity of the moment, of the critical moment tau n, when the nth eigenvalue disappears. But uh, let, let's now look uh, at the outside of the poten potential well. Uh, it turns out that, uh, I that in the vicinity of this moment, the quantum particle, which was previously localized inside the potential well, becomes delocalized and uh, sort of escapes, uh, uh, ex escapes the uh, potential well. And uh, it turns out that the probability to find the quantum particle, and in the acoustic prob problem, that was, that would, uh, this would be the energy of, of the wave. Uh, it turns out that it is uh, it, it, it uh, decays least quickly along a certain direction, uh, forming uh, a narrow beam, uh, which we can call, call a searchlight. Uh, and um, we, uh, we describe this behavior rigorously. Uh, maybe a couple words about the method used. Um, uh, the, the, the solution Psi n uh, admits uh, an integral representation of the following form. And uh, in, in, the, in, the, in the region of interest, uh, the phase function S has two uh, saddle points which are uh, close to each other and close to a branch point of S. Uh, by a suitable change of variable, we can uh, get rid of the branch point and then uh, study uh, uh, an integral with uh, two nearby uh, saddle points uh, using classical methods developed for this case, uh, namely the theorem of Ch Chester, uh, Friedman and Ursel, and so on. Uh, so the formula we obtain uh, is as follows. Uh, so we, we introduce a, a new uh, rescaled, rescaled variable, xi, which is the distance from the edge of the potential well, uh, well uh, times the small parameter. And uh, in, these, uh, in these variables tau and xi, we have uh, a uniform uh, asymptotic, uh, uh, a uniform, uniform asymptotic formula uh, roughly uh, in, uh, in a uh, compact region uh, up until the uh, critical point tau n and uh, uh, for bounded xi. Uh, uh, and yeah, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, we, we can actually uh, extend uh, this formula a little bit uh, beyond the critical moment, which allows us uh, to capture this searchlight uh, on, 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 from, from before. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this asymptotic formula uh, contains a function with complex arguments. Uh, the argument it depends on the small parameter uh, as ep epsilon to the power of minus one sixth. Uh, le le let's not dwell too much on this uh, complicated formula. And let's say instead that this formula can be uh, simplified under additional assumptions. Uh, if we assume uh, that we are in, in the boundary layer, that is uh, that uh, we are in this vicinity of the critical moment in time and this close uh, to the edge of the potential well. Uh, then uh, this formula uh, simplifies into the formula 12, uh, where nu and eta are the boundary layer coordinates. Uh, this function f uh, is given by formula 13, and it was uh, first introduced 
by Alan Pierce uh, when he heuristically studied uh, the acoustic problem. Um, this function f uh, satisfies uh, a certain model problem, a set of equations 15. Uh, and uh, if we consider uh, nu and eta, these new boundary layer coordinates, uh, to be of the order of one or, or, or smaller, so uh, if we are in the boundary layer, then uh, our, our adiabatic normal mode psi n uh, in the leading order has uh, um, uh, the, fol the following uh, asymptotics. Uh, inside the potential well, uh, it is a sine of x times f uh, when uh, the, the, the second uh, argument of f is equal to zero. And uh, outside, it is like, z like this. Up to some constant, up to some constant multiplier, uh, and uh, uh, it can be seen that uh, as the function f satisfies these equations, which uh, uh, incidentally is precisely the set of equation uh, obtained by Alan Pierce, uh, then uh, uh, these uh, these ansatz uh, satisfies uh, uh, solves our problem in the leading order. And here, uh, on, on this picture on the right, you can see the picture of the searchlight uh, from uh, Alan Pierce's paper. These lines are the lines of, of constant uh, absolute value, value of f. Uh, 